Hello folks, today I'm going to be taking a look at a collaboration between Mark Mondragon and Wargames Atlantic as they release more Eisenkern, this time in the role of Panzerjäger with 20 sci-fi ladies. Uh, so this is another Iron Core set and these are the Eisenkern Panzerjäger. So 20 multi-part hard plastic figures. There is some of the concept art and a bit of a tale about them. Interesting thing, these are all female and they are compatible with the Eisenkern Stormtroopers that I've previously looked at. So, in the box you get five sprues, sorry, four sprues, each make five miniatures. And it's a similar format uh, that we've seen with the Eisenkern. So, I suppose we start at the top and work our way down. First off, we have our shoulder pads, which are all in pairs. Uh, I don't believe it matters which one, although they are all numbered individually. Next up we have um, some heads with soft caps. Then we have heads with targeting visors on them. And the other two parts of the targeter are here. And then we have a set of five just standard heads with gas masks. After that we get into our weapons. So. They, they have a specific weapon type based on uh, Mark's Eisenkern layout from before. I don't know what they are, but you could get away with using these in a variety of ways. We definitely have bipod mounted light machine guns or support weapons. Then there's another bipods, but with a bit more robust cowling on it. Um, we have these machine uh, guns or assault rifles. We have a set of helmets um, and there will be a set of heads with no head, uh, no cranium that those helmets just fit onto. So you can have helmeted heads without the gas mask and visor. All of the arms are labeled. So we have R's and we also have H and S's further down the sprue. And depending on the weapon you want to use, you'll find a corresponding pair of hands. So for example, if I wanted to use this light machine gun, which is designated H2, so I would just need to go and find a pair of H hands. So here's a H1 and a H3. And that would allow me to position that weapon correctly on the body. Um, I'll flip us around here. We have our legs in the center. We have torso, and backpacks and then we have another set of weapons down here again these support weapons and uh, these ones that I quite like look, using as combat shotguns um, there are also several machine pistols an example of which is here about the sprue and a modicum of additional um, paraphernalia so there's two grenades uh, so potato masher style grenades. Uh, and then there's also drum mags for those assault weapons, as we'll see in a moment. Uh, I will point out there are six pairs of legs. So we have two complete pairs and then we have one, uh, two, three, four additional sets of legs. However, Two of them I can't make go together. So I'm not sure if they are there as an option. If you want to do a bit of conversion, conversion, converting, uh, to actually have all of the models up and running because you will have one kneeling with this setup. Um, I couldn't work out how to do it. I will play around with it some more. And if I have managed to make it work, I'll put it in the comments. Um, so it's either for that, for converting possibilities, or um, it's potentially a leftover. These are 
redesigned sprues from Mark's own um, plastic kits where they've taken the components, redid it so it fits onto one sprue and also rescaled it, resculpted it slightly. Um, so it's potential that those legs were for a sixth torso or they were left on and they should have been removed. I'm not sure. Um, I'm sure Hudson or somebody from War Games Atlantic will post below if they see this. So that's our sprue. Let's take a look at the completed miniatures. So I've made a sprue's worth and I've uh, assembled them with a variety of weapons as well. So I have my support standard loadouts and a uh, NCO to lead them. Build was very simple, like I say, you just follow the letters. Um, so some weapons may look the same, but there are slight variations. So you may find the stock is cut away at an angle to take a specific pair of hands. And if you try and put this weapon onto another arm, you'll end up with either half a weapon or you may find a stock getting in the way because you've attempted to put it on the wrong one. So do check those carefully. Um, otherwise, they're very nice pieces of, of plastic. Um, mold lines, minimal. Uh, flashing, non-existent. So there will be slight seam lines. You can see here on the thigh and lower leg that you may want to go in and clean. Or because they actually have clips over them, you can get away with leaving some of those seam lines because they're close enough to the armour halves, I suppose, uh, that... If anybody notices it, you can just go, well, that's where the two pieces of armor clip together. Um, but yeah, nice figures, good poses. So you've got sort of assault team poses as they move in. Here we have one on guard with the gun at the ready. Height wise, I suppose I'll show you that. They are 30 mil to eye level. So the larger, more heroic sized proportions that we're used to with sci-fi models these days. I quite like this, kneeling with the big support weapon. I imagine that's like a drum mag full of shotguns, like a jackhammer, bam, bam, bam. Positive, somebody will tell me it's not, but you know, it's my universe. You can't tell me. Again, another one of these drum mag weapons. I like the detail in it. It's not overly fussy. Um, there's not detail for the sake of detail. It looks like a set of armor uh, that would do the job. As you can see here, here's one of the heads without the gas mask which fits very nicely. And our final one is our NCO with the soft top running forward with that machine pistol and a underslung grenade launcher for a bloop. Uh, they do say you can mix and match. So I thought I would bring back a couple of the stormtroopers. So as you can see, uh, well, the first thing you can see is I forgot to put the shoulder pads on the women. Oh, that's a bit rum of me. The second thing you can see is scale-wise, they are very, very closely aligned. The armor is slightly different, as if they're uh, a more lightly armed set, although weapon-wise, they do have the same weapons. So that's nice. So you can mix and match. I would not be surprised to discover a supplemental kit or sprue coming with more weapons because there were various uh, add-on packs available including one that had quite a nice little um, dog drone I suppose for carrying stuff like a mule so if they do that um, that will give it a lot of, an awful lot more options but for the time being You've got the male, you've got the female squad. They are interchangeable. And while their weaponry is similar, 
well, it's not similar. Well, the weaponry is identical. Their armor is similar, but not identical. So you do have uh, differentiation between the units there if you want to have a um, lightly armed recon section, maybe, and then a more heavily armed and armored. Well, that being said, there's, you know, armor-wise, there's not a huge amount to tell them apart. So you can mix and match quite freely. That is the Eisenkern Panzerjäger. Uh, from Mark Mondragon and War Games Atlantic. So there you have it. 20 heavily armoured sci-fi women and not a boob plate in sight. Proper armour, proper guns, proper hard. I love it. Let me know what you think below, but I think a lot of people will be picking these up. Uh, the ever-expanding range between War Games Atlantic and Mark Mondragon is a thing of beauty, and long may continue, uh, giving more options for the tabletop, and especially with so many agnostic-based games at the moment, like Stargrave and Five Parsecs from Home and things like that, being able to stick some heavy troopers on the tabletop without people immediately going, oh, they're X, Y, or Z, is always good. Let me know what you think below, folks, but I'm going to move on. Bye-bye. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.